Well, we've, for our algebra stuff, we've worked on distributed property uh, a whole bunch. We've worked on combining different terms together. We've done that a whole bunch, and we're not going to get away from that. Uh, but before we can move any further, we have to talk about uh, solving algebra equations. And this is something that we did talk about last year. So what I'm thinking is that it won't be too hard to pick up, uh, but we're going to try it and kind of see how it goes. And then after a few times, we'll add in the distributed property stuff. We'll add in the combining term stuff and just kind of put it all together. Uh, but what I figured for this first part, since you haven't done this in a while and you may not remember how to do it, which is perfectly fine, uh, I would rather for this you just kind of follow along uh, and work while I'm talking here on the video. And, you know, things you can do, you can always pause the video and work the problem, then start it up again to see how you do. But uh, again, this is just kind of your learning tool to figure this out instead of me standing up in front of the class and talking. Uh, this way I can walk around and I can ask specific or answer specific individual questions too. So um, on 153 in that purple book, I'm just going to jump around and going to do a few different ones and then you're going to do some on your own here. But this is what number seven looks like. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to get at what this is because okay? we don't know what it is and that's what we're trying to figure out and some of these I, I mean you guys are pretty smart you can probably look at and figure out uh, but we've got to have a method to get this accomplished if you can't figure it out uh, because the problems will get a lot more difficult than this so uh, if we can get the method done on the easier problems then it definitely won't be a problem for the tougher ones so for these algebra problems our goal is to get this x completely by itself on one side of the equal sign. So what I like to do to start with is always just draw this line down the middle and know we have two distinct sides of this equal sign. Right now the 15 is by itself here and that doesn't matter to us. This is what matters to us. And how we do this is through a process of like a vocabulary word that we talked about inverse operations. Um, adding when it says to subtract, you know, divide when it says to say multiply, those kind of things, okay? The other thing to remember about this is it's always we want to keep both sides the how it started with. So to do that, you've got to do the same thing on one side that you end up doing on the other side. So if you do an inverse operation on one side, you've got to do it on the other side too. Uh, and I think that you'll catch on to this pretty quickly here, but how I, what I'm going to do, and I think it, it makes this easy, and you know, it's kind of like when we did the like terms, and once in a while, or after a while, you won't have to do this, but you know, like I'll circle this just to know it's a positive 3x, uh, I'll circle this to know it's a negative 6, and I'll circle this to know it's a negative 15, positive 15. Through our process, we want to try to get this by itself, so we got to start moving stuff over to this side. Okay? So I want to start moving this negative 6 over to this side. Uh, in order to do that, I've got to get rid of it by using an inverse operation. And that would just be to add 6 to both sides. So if I add 6 to both sides, uh, then I can just cross this out right here. Uh, and then this side would become 15 plus 6, which is just going to be 21. So my new problem looks like, and then I've got 3x. Okay. We don't have anything that we can add 3x to because remember we can only add or subtract you know, x's together and we don't have that. But what we can do is, since this is technically 3 times x, uh, we can multiply. I mean, this is multiply. We can do an inverse operation to get rid of this. So if I divide by 3 on this side, that's going to cancel this out, leaving me with only x. I have to divide by 3 on the other side. If I divide by 3 on the other side, that's just going to be 7, and our answer is going to be x equals 7. Now, what I really, really would like you to do, and everybody in here can do this, it's really easy to check if you're right or wrong. And I think that when we do tests and things like that, that's going to be a point requirement, is that you check to see how you did. All I have to do is take this x equals 7, and put it back into what I originally had. So I'll write it down here. I had 3 times x, so that's going to be 3 times 7, minus 6 equals 15. 
if both of the sides of the equal sign end up being the same thing, you know you're in good shape. Now you know this side's already 15, so we gotta see if this side's gonna be 15. Three times seven is gonna be 21. 21 minus six is also 15. So you know you got that problem right. X does in fact equal seven. All right, number 10. This is actually going to work basically the same as the other one, except for we've got everything on one side here. I mean, the opposite side is the other problem. And this is over here, but it really doesn't matter. If you're more comfortable taking this whole thing and putting it over here and taking this negative 3 and putting it over here and starting like that, you can. But it really shouldn't make any difference. This will work just fine. So basically we have a negative 3, a positive 4x, and a positive 5. And here's our equal sign right here. We draw the line down there to make sure both sides are exactly the same. What we're going to want to start out by doing is uh, getting rid of any pluses and minuses that we have. We'll worry about this 4x later because we couldn't add anything to it anyways right now because there's nothing to add to it because nothing else has an x behind it. So we'll focus on this. Now I could add 3 here to move this over here and then add 3 on this side, but that wouldn't do us any good because we're trying to get this by itself on a side. Okay, So we want to take as much stuff off the side with the variable as possible. So we're going to put this 5 and we want to get it over here and that's through inverse operations. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to subtract 5. Okay, And then I've got to subtract 5 on this side uh, and that's going to leave us with negative 3 subtract 5 is just going to be negative 8 uh, and then equals we still have 4x here okay? we still can't add or subtract that 4x to get rid of it because there's nothing with x's around it but what we can do is uh, we can take this 4 apart from the x because right now it's technically 4 times x so we can do the opposite we can divide Okay, so if I divide by 4 that gets that part off of there, uh, and now I'm just left with x. I've also got to divide by 4 on the other side, and that's going to give me x equals negative 8 divided by 4, which is going to be negative 2. x equals negative 2, and that's your answer. And again, like I said on the last question, I want you to check and see if you're right. So I'm going to write this down here. I'm going to put the negative 3 equals... We know it's 4 times x, so it's going to be 4 times negative 2. Uh, and then we have our plus 5. So this should e this is e negative 3, so the other side, if this is right, should all equal up to negative 3. Uh, and if we have 4 times negative 2, uh, that's going to be negative 8. Uh, and negative 8 minus 5, and I put minus 5, it's actually supposed to be plus 5 is the original problem, so I'll put that down there if you were confused. That's my fault. Plus 5. Now let's start again. 4 times negative 2 uh, is going to be negative 8. Negative 8 plus 5 going back towards 0 is going to be negative 3. Both sides are the same thing, so that checks out. We know that now negative 2 is for sure x.